Our next guest is a U.S. Pistol Gold Team member, holds several world shooting titles, is a trainer and a former federal agent, and one of my good friends. It is J.J. Rokaza. What is going on, man? You good seem... morning or good afternoon. <laughs> I, mean, how you doing, man? <laughs> I think that Vegas life is messing your head up, man. <laughs> messing me up. I've been traveling quite a bit lately, so yeah, I don't know my time zone half the time now. Ah, okay, okay. What, what, what type of traveling you been doing? Is it shooting related or just personal? Yeah. A lot of it's shooting related. Now that my wife's back home and we have a whole family entirely here now, uh -huh. um, I got a lot more, I guess, leeway on the rope to be able to travel and all that stuff. Flex my schedule a little bit. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, like, what, what, um, what was the most recent shooting competition that you've been involved in? Have you been shooting? You've been shooting competitively, have you? Yes. Okay. And how, how So, the most recent one was Area 1 Championships, okay. which had about just under 600 shooters join it. Um, and uh, it was a really good match. Very technical, uh, a lot of far shots, a lot of tricky shots and stuff like that. Um, there's some good sh shooters there. I think there were almost over 30 grandmasters there, I believe. Wow. And overall, people showing, um, showing up and uh, ended up with the overall win. So now, okay, so for people who don't know, when you say grandmaster, um, it, sounds like, it sounds like a karate turn to some people, and some people may not really conceptually get it as much. So what, what do we mean when you say there were grandmasters there? Basically, grandmaster is the highest level that you can get. It's like a black belt in karate. Uh -huh. And then there's, you know, in karate, there's fifth dan or whatever, first dan, second dan, second degree, third degree, whatever. Grandmaster is it. Like, gotcha. that's the highest you can go. That's the highest level. That means you've achieved some sort of accuracy and you're pretty good at um, doing some things fast. Um, and there were about 30 of them um, all across the divisions <laughs> in this last competition. It and it was, so it was a pretty solid show up. So is that is that... Is that typical, or is or what? Typically speaking, if, you, if you're going to go to a competition, how many grandmasters are you actually dealing with? Is it thirty, so, or, or is that, that normal, or is it usually much less? No, that was not very typical of it. The last um, most competitions, unless it's like the U.S. Nationals or the World Championships, mm -hmm. you might you might see ten or fifteen, depending um, on the match. Wow. Just this match, man. I looked it up before I even showed up. Uh -huh. There were over twenty eight, thirty. Um, Grandmasters um, listed, and you know it, it pushes you a little, little bit, makes you focus a little bit more when you know competition's coming. Um, so it just, it's a good thing once you're competing in a local match, not local match. It's a, it was a major match. Gotcha. Uh, considered there was just under 600 shooters there. So Jesus, 600? Yeah, there were just under 600 shooters. Yes. Wait, wait, what? From where? I all over the country. <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah, this How is long was the competition? Is a better question. With 600 uh, shooters, that's, I mean, so like, is, is it like golf? Is a lot of standing around and waiting? Like, that, with that many shooters, I would I would assume it was just kind of like, I mean, it, it went on for a while, right? I mean, how how long is the how long does the competition usually last? It, this this match was um, it it spanned from Wednesday all the way to Sunday, but you were we were all squatted separately. There uh -huh. were several squads. There were 18, 18 stages slash scenarios that we. You know, we get we have to kind of manipulate ourselves through, um, and per squad there was about 15 people. So yeah, there was a little bit of standing around. I think I shot I should wait. Well, I did. I shot two days straight, mm -hmm. um, and the guys in the in the weekend Friday because I shot Wednesday Thursday because that was the only time my schedule allowed. But Friday people shot Friday Saturday Sunday three days six stages each day, and they were able to squad 15 people per squad, which is six squads per. For the first half of the day, whatever, yeah. and then they would, and then you know, so they were able to squad, squad that many people, and you could just see how much um, how it adds from there. Fifteen times six times actually times twelve per day. Jeez. So, generally speaking, how many rounds do you go through through a, in a competition like that? A major competition like that, we would shoot about four hundred rounds. Four hundred. Yeah, wow. roughly average about four hundred uh -huh. rounds, and then it's funny because you spend. You know, like I spent three days, uh, four days there, a travel day, shoot, shoot, and then another travel day. Yeah. And um, I totaled up my shooting and it equal, equated to just, I believe, just over two minutes of shooting total <laughs> if you put all my videos together. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. That you spend a lot crazy. of time, mental preparation, practice for uh -huh. roughly about two minutes of shooting. <sighs> yeah, that, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I have the patience. And funny, dude, if you come back sore, tired, exhausted, <laughs> half of it's mental exhaustion. So, yeah. you know, you're, you're, cause you're so, you're trying to stay, stay so focused yeah. throughout the day. Yeah. It's a long day. So what, what were you shooting? 
I was shooting the open gun, the brace gun with the scope, the one that we were playing with. Ah, yeah. gotcha. So you still shoot, you're shooting that now. Okay, you really? Yeah, yeah. Ah. So uh, let me ask you, so like with, um, how much of an influence does, like what do you pull the most from being a competitor, is comp competing as much as you do when it comes to the gun that you decide to carry or keep by your bed stand? Like um, how much of an influence from what you learn from shooting competitively comes into play in the way you pick your self-defense guns, if at all? There, there's always influences. My world for the longest time revolved around competition. That's the only thing I ever knew. There was a little bit of touch of defensive uh, pistol when I was growing up uh -huh. in the Philippines. It was like a crash course. Like, hey, you need to be able to do this and defend this. And this is where you shoot. These are the soft parts of the body and stuff like that. But that was like a rough idea of, of my whole defensive, I guess you could say, tactical background. Um, I was always a competition guy. And then DHS came about and all that stuff, right? But so anything that I do with a competition gun, it's what I'm familiar with. I've always shot 1911s. Okay. 1911 steel frames, steel frame. And then we, even when I got hired for the uh, contracting, we were either carrying 1911s or shooting SIGs, and it was still steel frame. So I was never really the polymer guy for a while. And actually, it's funny because I, when I finally decided to shoot um, production division, which is basically the bare stock, bone stock type guns, mm -hmm. I was able to, uh, I decided to pick and choose a polymer frame company okay. and shoot that. Gotcha. So that was my first um, splash. But in terms of my everyday carry, it is definitely getting influenced um, directly with my competition background. Um, so I carry a 1911. Gotcha. Now, would you ever consider running? It's going to sound like a moronic question. Um, I almost said the R word I did. You saw that. Um, <laughs> well, they say I can't say it anymore. Good catch. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, would you ever consider running your, your competition gun and say like your, your nightstand gun? Would that be completely out of the question? No. Um, let's say a competition gun I had for a while was a production. I uh, was a, in the production division, which is Tampoglio. I ended up shooting for them. That's the company I represent right now in competitions. Yeah. I, for a while, when I was here in Las Vegas, when I just moved here, being that I came from the government, I carried 24-7. I could do whatever I want because I had that golden badge. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, I felt stripped and felt... Something was missing because yeah. I did it for 10 years, you know, yeah. and um, so the only thing I really had were competition lines. I never really had a defensive gun uh, except for a Glock that my, I won a long time ago. Uh -huh. And so I carried with me the Tanfoglio, the steel frame gun. It was heavy, but yeah, I made it work for me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was it a was, uh, it was very interesting. <laughs> feel. And at, by six, but the sixth hour or fourth hour of uh -huh. having it in your waistband, it, it got it got it got really bad. I can imagine. I get I, I I'm carrying a 43 right now. Earlier today, I just took it out of my <laughs> pants and just set it on the counter. I'm like, I'm tired of this right now. <laughs> so you're running a full size competition gun, man. I gotta give it to you, man. That is uh, that's impressive. It, here's another Quest thing. It's um wearing the wrong belt. Bingo. Doesn't help. Yeah. I've always been the type of guy that even in the government when I was wearing concealed and working full time yeah. for you know concealed, no whatever, be supposed to be ready. Um, for anything, I I always wore a dress belt. It was yeah. only stiffer, but the problem with that is that it doesn't distribute the weight correctly. Nope. And that's a lot of when a lot of people miss. I, I misunderstood that until I finally finally carried a heavy gun. Man, I was and I like, was man, my back starting to hurt. I was a moron when I first started carrying. I was wearing <laughs> I was carrying with Gucci belts and all type of other nonsense, <laughs> wondering why my, my I couldn't keep my gun up and all this other. They really weren't Gucci belts, but you know, close enough. But um, <laughs> but you were absolutely right. Um, you, the belt really when I really changed my belts um, and started going to a, a more concealed carry focused belt, it, it made all the difference in the world. And so you know, at, at there's one thing that I can give as far as advice to people who are just now starting to carry: do yourself a favor and just get a concealed carry focus belt because it makes a world of difference. Or if you just really want to go through all that pain, go ahead and wear whatever belt you're wearing now. You're just gonna come back and end up wearing a concealed carry belt anyway. So <laughs> I, I, I'll be the first one to say it: just get a get a good belt. And I used to, I used to try to buck the system. I'm like, you know, a concealed carry belt. I don't need that nonsense. <laughs> I'm, I'm too cool for that. Please start carrying a gun yeah. every day. You'll start wearing it. I'm too pretty for that's what you wanted to yeah. say. Didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> man, you know, my guy, I got my Gucci belt on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but now we're going um, we're gonna, to we're gonna take a short break and um, we'll come back. We'll do some more talking with JJ.